The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area money, those who were sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he, raised, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. In March of last year, uh, there was a remarkable event on campus, uh, for me anyway. Um, but just outside that window, there was a uh, burst water pipe. And so south of the chapel, flowing towards the east, there was a stream of water flowing into a drain in, uh, the, uh, in the field behind us. And I saw this and I was immediately very struck by it and kind of made a joke of it. And this isn't this funny scriptures being fulfilled here on campus, right? But as I reflect back on it, my, my reaction really was, my goodness, like this is the temple of this campus. Uh, here, scripture seems to be pointing to something that I am myself experiencing. Uh, wouldn't it be remarkable if scripture was fulfilled in precisely this way, that people could walk by the stream and not even notice it, um, that they could walk by the wall of this chapel and never give a second thought to the fact that the tabernacle is enclosed here, uh, that people could walk by this chapel and never fully appreciate uh, the weight and the significance of all that is here. Um, I think this is exactly what Jesus is reacting against um, in the gospel today. That so often uh, in, the, in his time and perhaps even in our own, we come into a holy place and we don't make it holy by our reverence. Right? We fail to recognize the significance of what is here. Uh, we fail to give adequate, adequate appreciation to how close God is to us. That God is surely present in the teaching in Zinneman Hall and A.G. Hall, but there's a very real presence of the Lord here in this chapel. Uh, and so we can come here to offer sacrifice at Mass, certainly. But we can also come here to be renewed in that sense of reverence, right, of these kind of twofold fruits of reverence that we find uh, in the Scripture today. One is terror, right? This is terrifying that God himself is present in this space. Uh, and therefore, I should approach this altar with fear and trembling, uh, mindful that God is here and I am not God. And if I'm not right with God, when I encounter him, my life may be, may be in danger, right? That's a good and holy fear. Um, I should be terrified uh, to come into this chapel, right? Um, and this is perhaps the reason why we show reverence and genuflecting or however else we enter in the, into the chapel. Um, but the second one might be very, very different to that, maybe surprising, right? And that this should gladden the city of God. It should fill us with joy. Uh, that here, if I approach worthily, if I approach with fear and trembling, uh, I can approach also with great joy. That the Lord is close to me, uh, that he blesses me when I enter into this space. Uh, and that a river of water flows throughout this entire campus from the south of this, of this uh, very chapel. Um, that waters all of the work that we do, uh, that fills it with life, that allows it to bear fruit. Uh, fruit that will remain even as uh, perhaps great struggle and suffering is in our midst as well. Let's pray today that we can receive this great uh, blessing of God, of both terror and joy, um, that we can have this sort of wrestle in our hearts, perhaps today, um, as we receive the Eucharist, um, that we should be afraid, but that also there should be a new source of life and joy uh, on our campus as well.